My name's Genevieve Bailey, and I'm your guide today to the greatest city in the South, Southampton! This is the beginning of our tour, the Bargate. It's got to be one of the finest town gates in England. It's had many alterations over the years, but the original gate, come on, let's go and have a look. The original gate dates to around the late 12th century and was used for collecting tolls. The first floor was the Guild Hall. Then it became the courthouse and downstairs was the prison. Now, in medieval times, you didn't hang around in that prison for long because we had a long list of things we could hang you for. The lions were originally wood with lanterns in their mouths. And they have a link with the two medieval panels in the Bargate of Sir Beavis and Ascupar. Sir Beavis had fallen in love with the fair maiden Jossian, and Sir Beavis and Ascupar had left Jossian in a cave. Well, two lions came absolutely bewitched by her beauty and took up his sentinels on each side of the cave till the men returned. Hence, the two lions on the front of the bar gate to guide every fair maiden coming into the city of Southampton. You're coming with me. Oh, with this bell, dated 1605. But the original bell, every night at 10 o'clock, the Normans would come up here and ring that bell and cover le feu, cover your fires. At least no one went out after 10 o'clock at night. We shortened that to curfew. No, it was the bakers that were causing the fires. And if you were a baker in medieval times selling bread short weight, you had your ear nailed to the door, which is why there are 13 in a baker's dozen. The block of flats is where the original site of the Anglo-Saxon village of Hampton stood. Now, we're a happy little Anglo-Saxon village until the Normandy invasion of 1066. Now, in the Doomsday Book for 1086, there are 96 head of the households, 65 are French, and only 31 are English. So the rich Normans who all spoke French lived in the French Quarter, which is French Street and the English lived in English Street, which was renamed High Street in Henry VIII's time. You have to think of the Bargate is the division between the old Norman part of the city and the new consumer age with the whisky. In medieval times, the water came right up to the wall. And if you'd have stood here, you'd have seen ships loaded with woolen cloth for export, but unloading wine, glass and silks. They filled all this in. It's all reclaimed land. The steps, they were built in 1851 by the Victorians so the ladies and gentlemen could promenade along the beach. Remember, the water came right up to the walls and this has got to be the biggest medieval toilet in the country. Built around 1380. It wasn't cubicled, we all sat cheek to cheek and the word embarrassment hadn't been invented. 
the tide would have come in and the tide would have washed it all away. Southampton used to have a castle and this is the castle vault and it's the only remaining part of the castle intact and in here is where they stored all the king's wine. Richard the Lionheart was king for nine years of that he only spent six months in England and the only Christmas in our royal castle of Southampton and we know he definitely came down here to check on his casks of wine. It's now being used by a space to exhibit modern art. And if you stare at that smoke long enough, you'll see Richard the Lionheart, sword in hand, back from the crusade. Do you know, if you look at all the old walls, we don't have any local stone. All that stone come from Bembridge on the Isle of Wight, a little bit from Normandy and France. A duty was imposed on everyone pulling in at Southampton. If you didn't stop off at Normandy or Bembridge on the Isle of Wight, pick up stone, you paid a heavy duty when you got here. Now, it was after the French raid of 1338 that Edward III said, wall up the town. And if you look across, you can see the doors and the windows of the Norman houses all walled up. It was Edward III who became king in 1327 who said, that's it, we're not speaking French in court anymore. So, the three lines of England that you see on the football shirt today, so that's Henry II, Eleanor of Aquitaine, and Richard the Lionheart, not one of those spoke English, they all spoke French. As I was a Over Southampton, there's hidden history. During the Second World War, the Yanks queued up here, waiting to board ships to take them to Europe. How do we know? They all sign their names on the wall. I mean, just look up here. 22nd of December, 1944, Joe N. Jones. It was the 25th of October, 1944, that the millionth Yank walk through a floral arch in the docks. So come on then, we're off to the Westgate and Agincourt. Henry V in 1415 really put Southampton on the map when he decided that he and his men would leave from Southampton for Agincourt. They came through this arch, he had 10,000 men. 5,000 of those were archers, he had knights in shining armour, squires coming and going, and nobles in full wall regalia carrying medieval banners with the arms of England. Round here, we have the Tudor Merchants Hall. Now, years ago, you didn't just pull a building down, you re-erected it somewhere else. And this building originally stood in St Michael's Square. It sold fish from the bottom, and cloth from the top. Well, in 1634, the building was sold to Alderman Edward Exton for 20 marks. Now, that's about 13 pounds, six shillings and eight pence. And he had it re-erected here. 
Now, in 1725, the building was bought by the shipwrights because all the shipwrights lived in Westgate Street. Even the Duke of Wellington was called the Shipwrights Arms. In 1720, the Shaley Beach Spring had been discovered near Spa Road. And Southampton went through a bit of a spa period. Frederick, Prince of Wales, he came to bathe and to take the waters in Southampton. Now, he certainly knew how to flog it because he said they were salubrious and invigorating. Even the author, Jane Austen, attended the assembly balls at the Dolphin. Well, the spa period, that ended about 1820. The Prince of Wales, he became Prince Regent. He preferred Brighton, so all the rich, all the wealthy, all went off to Brighton. And Southampton was out of fashion. But it wasn't out of fashion for long, because in 1838, they laid the foundation stone for the docks. And Southampton took off with a bang. There are more details about the places we visited during the Grand Tour on our website, that's www.meridian.tv.com.